what's up everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm gonna be unboxing this new rechargeable nail drill from melody susie i'm also gonna be doing a set with those new acrylics that i purchased from acrylics today so i'm super excited about that but yeah let's go ahead and unbox this e-file really quick this is what it looks like it's a white and pink color it's super cute it's really thin as well it's not like thick like some of their other ones that i've tried and it is rechargeable like i mentioned so that's always good i hate having to use e-files when they're plugged in now i feel like it's so much more convenient without it you can also hook it on your little like bell or your pants or whatever so yeah this is the hand piece it is also white and pink it's like a pinkish purple color it's really nice melody susie always like has really good nail products or like equipment um so that's why i really like them i swear by melody susie drills and lamps and everything they have some of the best quality ones that i've ever tried so yeah there's also a separate box here um, with a little like hand piece holder that you clip onto the side of the drill and it holds the little hand piece and this is the plug where you would um, plug it in and charge it. It charges pretty fast and it lasts quite a while um, as well. It does go from 0 to 35,000 RPMs which is also really good. I like how they started making the portable e-files up to 35,000. And here is also a little handpiece holder if you were going to put it on your desk or something. But yeah, you don't want anything under 35,000 because it usually is not that good. And there's also some good drill bits that came with this drill, finally. Um, this one is a coarse grit, and then the other one that I showed was a medium ceramic drill bit. I actually used a coarse grit to remove my nails, and it works really good. I was at first a little bit scared, but it actually wasn't that scary. Um, and there's some more like cuticle bits and a man drill bit. But yeah, the coarse grit bit was a little bit scary at first because I thought I was going to cut myself but it's actually not really as bad as it looks um so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and test it out and let you guys hear it by the way i do have my ac on in the video so try to ignore that but this drill is so quiet like um you could barely even hear it all you hear is like literally my fan um but yeah i'm just gonna like adjust the speed from high to low this is how you do it and the little black button you either like um, put it right or left for forward or reverse. Right is forward and left is reverse. So it's really not loud at all. Um, and if you guys are interested in this drill, I will link my discount code in the description box. All right, so let's get into it. I'm gonna start by applying my nail tips. Yes, we are changing it up and doing this set from start to finish. I figured you guys would wanna see that since I did um, get some new nail tips. So yeah, these are the flat nail tips that I've been using in my videos. I do have them linked in my Amazon store, by the way. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna start by gluing them on first. These are super freaking long. <laughs> like, I didn't realize they were gonna be so long, but then again, they are XXL. So I might purchase like ones that are a little bit shorter next time. Or I might just keep these because sometimes I do like to adjust the length to be long. So I might just keep these because this way if I want to make my nails long, I can just like cut them or whatever. But yeah, um, when you're applying your nail tips, you want to make sure that the nail tip fits sidewall to sidewall. Um, and if you're in between sizes, you can file up the sides. And sorry, my head is getting in the way, but I just want to make sure I wasn't like gluing them on crooked. So I kind of like hold them down for like 10 seconds and then pinch the sides to make sure they're on really good so that like no air bubbles or anything get um, under there because that's what can cause lifting and make your sets like just pop off and stuff So you want to make sure you're gluing your tips on good. I'm using this glue from um, Sally's it's a beauty secrets glue. It's like a quick dry one um, I picked it up because I ran out of glue one day and I actually really do like it um, and you also want to make sure your nails are clean of any product. I leave a little bit of pink acrylic as you could see on the tips of my nails because as you guys know I use that to like file my nails down like when I change my sets I kind of use it as a guide and also to protect my nail um, because I change them so frequently from making these videos. 
I mean, you do want to push the cuticles back and like, yeah, just etch to the surface of your natural nails, but I've already done that off camera. Um, and now I'm just going to cut the tips. I'm just going to use these little scissors that I have um, to pre-cut them to trim down some of that length because yeah, they are way too long. We're not, we're not doing nails that long today. Maybe one day I'll try it, but yeah, I need them long, but to where I can still function because I can't function with nails that long at the moment. I haven't gotten to that level yet where I can wear nails like that. Um, but yeah, mine are still really long anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm just trimming down the length. If you're using scissors, don't worry about it being like perfectly even at the bottom um, because usually I do the rest of my shaping with my drill. Um, so yeah, I'm using it on about 15,000 RPMs and I'm using the mandrel bit and one of the standing bands that came with the e-file and I'm just going across the bottom and straightening out those rough edges and then filing along the sides to take off some of the bulk and then I'm gonna like etch over the surface of the nail tips. You always want to etch over the surface of the nail tips. Um, because it helps the product stick to your nails better rather than just doing it on, you know, a shiny nail tip. It's optional. You don't have to do that, but I just like to, um, because I go in and like blend the tips anyway, where the tip and the natural nail meet. So you can't see the nail tip through. It kind of just blends with your natural nail once you have your acrylic on and everything like that. So yeah, as you can see, when I'm taking the bulk off of the sides of the nail tip, I'm going like straight down and kind of like angling the drill towards the tip of the nail to kind of like taper it in like a tapered square shape um, and then I kind of like go in with my hand file and further shape up the nails. Okay so like I said I'm gonna go in and etch over the nail tips now. Um, and blend the tips where the tip and the natural nail meet so everything looks nice and seamless once I apply my acrylic. You don't want to do this too hard because you don't want to thin the nail tips. You just want to lightly etch over them. As you can see, I'm just like very lightly going over it. It's sped up, but it's really just very light touch just to like etch the surface. I feel that it does help the product stick to the nail a lot better. Like I used to not do it, but then when I started doing it, I was like, okay, it does like make a difference. Um, so if you're having issues with that, definitely try etching your nail tips um, and blending them. I always blend them regardless. Um, because you definitely don't want to be able to see like that nail tip, especially if you're doing like maybe like some sort of translucent nails or something like a jelly or a very light pink nail bed or something like that for French nails. So yeah, that's why I always do that. And now I take my hand file and shape them up to get like the final shape. Um, so I'm using a 100, 180 grit nail file. I prefer like the bigger square hand files now because I feel like it's easier to shape with them um, and you get like a better shape because they're a lot bigger. So to get the tapered square shape, I start by filing straight on the sides of my nail to kind of like file the bulk off of the sides um, to get the nail like to the desired width that I want it to be. And then I hold my file straight but at an angle and file in towards the tip of the nail which is going to taper in the tip of the nail and give you that tapered square look. If you wanted more of a coffin shape you would file it in like a little bit more so it's a little bit more narrow and if you wanted more of like a ballerina you would file it in even more and for stilettos you would just like keep filing it into a point basically. Um, so yeah, and to file the free edge, I hold my file at an angle and file straight across. Or you can hold your file at an angle and file up and down. I did actually end up taking the pinky down a little bit more off camera because I didn't really realize how long it was afterwards. But yeah, other than that, everything else pretty much stayed the same. Pick up the phone, show me it was real. Pick up the phone, show me it was real. Pick up the phone, show me it was real. Pick up the phone. Yeah, I don't wanna put no pressure on ya. I just wanna put a 
So let's go ahead and get into the design now. I did go ahead and wash my hands and I dehydrated with some isopropyl alcohol and now I'm using some Young Nails Protein Bond as my primer. I'm applying two coats and waiting for that to dry. Now, if you are doing this on yourself and your nails were bare, you would have to apply a thin layer of clear acrylic to your nails, but I already have pink acrylic, like I said, on my nails, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, but you're gonna want to apply a little bit of clear to your nails so that your nails, like your natural nails, don't get stained from the colored acrylics. So yeah, I'm finally using my new acrylics that I purchased from Acrylics. I'm freaking obsessed with these colors and like, can I get like a like for this color combo? I mean, likes are free, sis. I'm just saying like, come on, give your girl a like because this set is bomb. I don't care what any of you say. It's bomb. Okay. You have to agree that this set is bomb. Like the color combo, come on. But anyways. On this pinky, I'm going to be doing a triple ombre, and I just love the ombre that I did on this nail. Ooh, it was so pretty once I capped it. So on the tip, I used iris, which is that really pretty purple. It almost looks like a jelly color, but it's not. It's weird how it looks like that. Um, and then in the middle, I'm using the cotton candy shade, which is that really pretty like Barbie pink color. And then at the top, I'm using my favorite glitter shade from Acrylics called Hottie. It's like a hot pink glitter with like blue reflex in it. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of like placing a little bead and like fading that down. But as you can see, it kind of covered up a little bit more of the pink in the middle than I wanted. Um, so I'm going to go in with a little bit more pink and fade that up. I'm also keeping my layers thin because I will be encapsulating these um, later on. You need to encapsulate ombre nails um, so that you don't file through the blend when you go to like file shape and buff. But yeah, as you can see, I brought that pink in the middle back to life because yeah, it kind of like disappeared after I applied the glitter. On this nail, I'm going to be doing a marble at the tip of the nail and then doing an ombre. I really love the way this marble came out. It kind of reminded me of those little like Flintstone push pops back in the 90s. I don't know if anyone remembers those, but like they had like all these little swirly like colors and like different flavors and stuff and it just reminded me of that afterwards. I don't know why, but maybe because of the colors or whatever. Um, so the colors that I'm using for the marble on this nail are iris, which is the purple shade from acrylics I'm also using sky, which is the blue shade and then that pink shade cotton candy And what I'm doing is I'm like picking up the blue and the purple at the same time And kind of like placing it on the nail and like moving it around and then picking up some blue and pink And then vice versa kind of just like adding in more pink or whatever color I feel like I need to add in here in there and one tip which makes your marbles come out a little bit better is if you work with the acrylic wetter because then you could kind of like you know move the colors around or like swirl them into each other but yeah i love the way this came out and the top color for the ombre that i'm using is queen pink from jasmine torres nails this is one of my favorite like pink acrylics for doing ombres or just like in general i really love it it's like a almost like a translucent pink i can't really explain it but i love this color and it went really good with this set um so to do the ombre i kind of just do one small bead like kind of right under the cuticle and fade it into the tip and then go in with another small bead right over that and fade that into the tip as well um, and i also work with the acrylic a little bit wet so that they blend better together I On this nail, I'm going to be using that pink glittery shade, Hottie. I'm just doing the entire nail. 
this color because I feel like this color just needed its own nail like on its own like just to shine because this glitter is so freaking pretty like this glitter is literally what made the set so it does take like a few beads to like um you know kind of like build the glitter up I mean if you wanted more of that like sparse glitter look I would suggest only using a little bit of it but if you wanted like a really glittery nail like how I'm doing you have to go over it like a couple times to build it up I thought the base on this one was pink but after like applying it on the nail you can see that um, the base is clear so that's why I say you need to go over it a couple times to like really bring out those pink glitters you know what I mean um, so yeah I'm doing that and I will be capping this nail later on so that I don't fall through the glitter or anything For this nail, I'm also going to be doing an ombre, um, but this time I'm going to be using the shade Iris, which is the purple shade at the tip of the nail. And then I'm using the cotton candy shade at the top. So it's just going to be like a pink and purple um, nail, like an ombre. Um, I really love the way these colors blend into each other. They blend so good into each other. Like it's literally effortless. I feel like these are really good beginner acrylics. They just like blend so well into each other. Like no matter what color you're using, they just like whatever combo you pick, I feel like they would just like, just blend like so easily. I really love these acrylics. Like these are my type of formula when I think of acrylics. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm doing. To blend it, I do the same thing, like apply one bead right under the cuticle and blend it down into the tip and then go in with another bead and then of course if you do need to add in any more you just like add them in now i'm going to go ahead and encapsulate these nails with mia secret clear acrylic i'm using mia secret monomer with all of these acrylics by the way um, but yeah i'm doing my three bead method um, and the reason i'm capping them um, as I mentioned earlier, it's good to cap your ombres because um, when you file, you don't want to file through your blend. Also, um, the reason I said to keep the layers thin um, is so that you can like go over them with clear without them ending up too thick, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, ignore that first bead. It was a little bit wet. Um, but yeah, I usually do a three bead method to encapsulate my nails which will help build up the structure of the nails um, in the apex um, that's what i use the clear to do the first bead i apply it towards the free edge of the nail to build up structure on the free edge of the nail and i focus it in the areas that i put it in um, so the second bead is like right above the smile line and i use that to start building my apex um, and then the third bead is the cuticle bead, which I use to further build my apex. And yeah, I don't like really brush it down too much, only just to blend it a little bit. And I do pat the sides of my nails to help keep the shape while the acrylic is drying. And like the tip of the nail, it helps keep the shape of your nails um, so that you don't have like really wide nails in the end. If you like work too fast and don't like, um, you know pat the sides of the acrylic it can tend to run off to the sides um, making your nails wider and in the end you'll have a lot more filing to do it's like one of those things where you work smarter and not harder you have to have patience when it comes to acrylic since it um, needs time to dry um, it doesn't really take that long to dry but I'm just saying you can't just slap the acrylic on and move on to the next nail and do it all fast and think you're done like there's a lot more to it than that 
Um, so yeah, and I always do like the three bead method, but like if I have to add in more beads, I will if I need to. I'll just take a look at my nail and see if I need to add in any more. Um, but yeah, I really love these acrylics. I know I said that a million times, but something about acrylic, I like it better than poly gel, mainly because the colors are more unique and like you have more options when it comes to acrylic. In my last video, I did mention I was getting bored of poly gel, but yeah, I am because it's like, I don't know, it's kind of like the same colors over and over again. With acrylic, you just have like so many options. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and start shaping up the nails. So I'm going to use my drill at about 18,000 RPM since we're doing acrylic today. And acrylic is a little um, like more harder than poly gel. So you need to like up the RPMs a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm using that medium grit ceramic drill bit that came with this drill. This is actually one of my favorite drill bits. I have another one of these drill bits from Melody Susie that I normally use all the time and it works so good I'm telling you. It has a like guard on it. It's like a safety bit but I love this bit because I can get close to the cuticle area enough to like seal it without having to go in with a cuticle bit so i'm all about saving time doing my nails and i really love how smooth this drill is as well and like how it doesn't vibrate or anything like that i do have a little bit of carpal tunnel like in my left hand so i always tend to look for drills that don't um vibrate a lot because that's what can cause carpal tunnel in a nail tech if you never knew that um, I actually had it when I was pregnant and then it went away, but for some reason lately I've been getting it again. It only like happens at night once in a while, but I had to like get a brace to like wear it on my wrist. And I think it's probably because when I file my other hand, like 
um, it tightens up my wrist because I get like so tense trying to keep the drill straight which you're not supposed to like bend your wrist you're supposed to keep your wrist as straight as possible but I think because I tense up so much it like puts pressure on the nerve um, so like the next day after doing nails it always like starts to burn and tingle a little bit so I have to be careful with that but yeah my point is you want to like use drills that don't vibrate a lot um, that's why they usually say that like when you go to school and in your textbooks because the vibration can actually cause the carpal tunnel this one is super smooth and quiet um so yeah this is my new favorite from now on so expect to see me using this one a lot until i find one that's even better than this but yeah so far i love this one because it's quiet it's smooth it takes down the product fast and it's like super thin and it's portable rechargeable so yeah it's really good all in one but anyways yeah most of you guys know i always like start by debulking my nails and then go in and shape i like to shape last to get that really nice sharp shape that lasts um so i go around the cuticle and get that down really good to seal it um you want to make sure your cuticle is sealed properly so that you don't get any lifting um, a way you can tell, like I always mention, you can take your nail and feel around the cuticle area. If it snags on anything, you're going to want to go back in and seal. If not, then you know you've sealed properly. And I also like smooth over the entire nail. I go like side to side and I feel over the nail and make sure there's like no bumps or anything. Um, and I also file along the sidewalls. Um, to make sure that like they're nice and thin those should be the thinnest part of your nail And you should have the little hill at your apex and then the nail gets gradually thinner towards the free edge um, And also make sure you file underneath your nails as well And now I'm going to go in and do my final shaping. So we're going to be doing the long tapered square. So we're just going to basically file the nails like we did for the nail tips, um, but slightly different. Um, so what I do is I hold my file straight and I file the bulk off of the sides of the nail like I usually do to get like my desired overall width of the nail. And I do like angle the file in and file in towards the tip of the nail to taper it in. But I also do take my hand file and file over the surface of the nail to like further like um, tighten up the shape of the nails basically. Because sometimes when I go in with my drill and then I start filing my nails, I see like parts of the nail that I still want to file. So I just like further shape up the nails with my hand file um, just so that everything looks nice and neat um, I'm really like obsessive about my shape like I always want my shape to look like perfect I feel like that's really important in a set because you could have the most bomb set of nails but like if the shape don't look right it's just gonna make the whole set look like trash you know so I feel like that's one of the things you should master first is like the overall structure of your nail and the shape of your nails before you get into like designs and stuff because I've seen like people that do bomb designs but like their shape is just like not very flattering you know um, so yeah, I prefer to use like nails without a C-curve because I find that the ones that do have a C-curve, they tend to make your nails look really bulky and I don't like that bulky look. I like my nails to look more, not thin, just like more narrow, I guess, um, and flat at the bottom. Not like, I like a little bit of a curve, but not like, you know, not 
too thick if that makes any sense i used to like remove the c-curve from my old nail tips that's why i was so glad when they finally made flat ones that were like long and square like this And then you just wanna take your buffer and buff over the surface of all of your nails to buff out any scratches. This will also help smooth them out so there's no rough edges. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and apply these little Hello Kitty stickers to my nails. These are so freaking cute, I love these stickers. Um, so I'm just applying them onto my nail with some tweezers. You just want to be careful when you peel them back because they're so small. I actually messed one of them up and had to grab another one because it like folded under and I couldn't get it. So I was just like, threw it away. Um, but yeah, just be careful to peel them back because they're so tiny that sometimes they're hard to put on the nail um, and just make sure they're smooth and flat on your nail so they're not popping up through your top coat or anything when you go to top coat them this is the one that I actually messed up it folded under and I was trying to fix it and then I was like yeah forget it let's just go ahead and get another one On this nail, I'm going to be painting some dollar signs because I wanted to add a little something extra to this set and I thought it would be really cute. So I'm using Bliss Pink from Nail Reserve. It's a really pretty hot pink um, and my detail brush in the number three. These are the brushes I use from Savalan. So I'm just making a little S shape and then like two lines going up. It's really easy to draw. And the second one, I didn't really like the way it came out, so I ended up removing it and like doing it over. Um, but yeah, I feel like it just added, you know, a little something something to the set.
And now I'm gonna go ahead and apply some bling. My camera actually cut off like while I was applying the bling, so I only caught some of it. But for the bigger charms, I'll be using my Beatles rhinestone gel as usual to hold them um, so that they don't fall off. And then for the smaller flat back purple stones and um, the pink ones, I'll be using like the rhinestone gel but brushing it over the nail and applying the top coat and then just applying them into the gel. Um, for this one, I did kind of just put the um, gel right onto the nail and just do it, but you could do it either way. It really doesn't matter. So the stones that I'm using are like some little purple AB rhinestones. I also have some Chanel charms, some pink rhinestones in different shapes, and then some little teddy bears. On the thumb, I did put like a lollipop and i also did that same marble that i did on the ring finger on the thumb but i just added a little bit of that um hottie glitter like in between it to give it some glitter reflex but yeah that is all i did for this set really like i said it kind of cuts off during my bling application so sorry about that but i was like in the zone and then i looked up and it wasn't even recording anymore so i was like really but it is what it is i hope you guys like this set let me know what you think of it in the comments if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe before you leave and hit the notification bell so you get notified when i upload a new video i post nail tutorials reviews unboxings swatch videos every week so definitely hit that bell so you get notified and don't forget to follow me on instagram and tiktok if you're not already and i'll see you guys in my next one bye love you guys